I'm John White. With me today is Larry Dixon. Larry is a master gardener here in Doniana County. And Larry, you brought some problems and some questions with you. Right. I uh, have quite a variety of things here this morning, John. One of the first things that somebody has brought in is this uh, delicious looking <laughs> larva here. Okay. That's a uh, larvae off of what we call a longhorn beetle. Uh, the adult beetle is usually, a, uh, you know, from this one, probably a chocolate brown beetle that is somewhere in the neighborhood of probably four to six inches long. And um, this particular larvae is uh, a root borer. It does attack the uh, root systems on, on different plants and usually our large trees and usually some are more soft wooded trees. So some are old elms, uh, cottonwoods, poplars, willows. Uh, this can be a problem on it. And a lot of times you do not discover the problem until it's actually done the damage to the tree. So, uh, you know, it's kind of rare to find this uh, in this form unless the tree has blown over and, and exposed the, the larvae. But uh, as far as control, there's not really a control for this because you don't know whether the tree has this insect in it or not because it's down at the underground. Right. And so you can't use a systemic or, you know, you know, keep putting insecticides around. So you really just, you know, try and plant uh, better quality tree, you know, species for the area and, and stay away from the weak wooded trees. Very good. I'll put him back. What else do you have? Well, I have the proverbial rose <laughs> with the aphids on it. All right. Uh, they're yeah, all starting to green out, bud out, and uh, aphids are coming from all over the county. And we can see a couple of aphids right there on the on the bud. Uh, this is kind of a light infestation. Um, some of the ones I've seen around the the southern end of the state here, we have a pretty big aphid problem right now. There, are, aphids are out on everything, crops and and in our gardens and and uh, landscapes, but. Uh, aphids very distinctive, uh, you know, soft-bodied insect, fairly, fairly easy to kill, but they do keep coming back at you in large numbers, so they're, they're uh, hard to control. Well, speaking uh, of kill, what, uh, what's some of the things we can do to get rid of them? Okay. Well, the ladybugs uh, you can buy in the bags like this. Uh, with our cooler weather, the ladybugs will stick around. There's a lot of them that are out right now working on some of the aphid populations on on a lot of our plants. Uh, as it gets hotter here in the southern part of the state, the ladybugs are not going to stick around and they're going to head up to higher ground. So if you are going to release ladybugs, you need to do that pretty quick so that it'll, they'll stay in the area. Uh, other things that can be done, um, this is a new little product out that's uh, neem. Uh, comes from the uh, neem tree. It's an extract from the neem tree and uh, reports it's had pretty good uh, effects on aphid, uh, white fly, and, and uh, leafhopper populations. So that might be something that people might want to look at, and it's a real safe product. And then the other thing that they can use as far as roses is a systemic rose food. This one uh, has the uh, disiston insecticide in it. You put it into the soil of the, you know, around the rose bush, water it in, it's picked up by the roots of the plant and it's taken up into the sap system of the plant. And so it ends up in a you know, concentration in the leaves and in the stem of the rose. And when the aphid goes to suck some of the juice out, it gets kind of a poison juice and it's killed off that way. And uh, aphids are usually more of a problem here in the early spring. Um, you know, as it starts getting hotter, the aphids will disappear and so the disiston doesn't need to be used year-round. Just kind of catch it in that first uh, wave of, of aphids that hit, and you can do a pretty good job knocking it down. It'll last for uh, several weeks, so you get some pretty good protection on it. Well, that's very good. Will it uh, kill other insects besides uh, the aphids? Only sucking insects. Only sucking. Um, <laughs> our thrips that hit roses a lot that get into the buds, they... Uh, you don't get that That's much. Different. You don't get that much systemic in the actual bud, so it really doesn't do that good job on thrips. But it does a real good job on aphids. Well, that's so, good. And that good. neem sounds like a good uh, product too, because I know last fall here in Las Cruces we had a terrible infestation of white flies, 
Right. Uh, lots of them. Well, this well, has a good broad spectrum, and it's good, safe material to use. Great, great. What else do we have here? I have a couple other questions that have come in recently. Is is people go to the nurseries and they see <clears throat> set out plants that are in bloom, those that are not. Which are the best to buy and put out? Okay. A lot of people like to uh, buy their flowers in bloom, and really the best way to buy them is not in bloom. And so you can kind of see what the color is, but actually you get better growth and more flower production off of uh, buying them, you know, kind of a younger form, and, and they'll actually perform better for you. Why, why really is that? Yeah, because this one's going to continue to put growth into the flowers instead of the roots or all the above? or. Yeah, it's put a lot of its production into already producing flowers and stuff, and this one will do much better. But that's so pretty already. <laughs> well, this is the best way to do it. Okay. Larry, thank you very much for You're welcome, being Dad. on the show today.